Welcome to the Retail Tea Break. Each week, I'll be joined by industry experts, retailers, and product creators to decode the myths, share knowledge, and give you a better insight into the industry. My aim, as always, is to empower retailers and product creators to reach their potential. So, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and listen in. My name is Melissa Moore, and this is the Retail Tea Break. Today, I am joined by a woman who's finally going to decode some myths for a question I am asked weekly, all the time. She's a lady that owns Ireland's dedicated agency for digital influence and marketing. Sinead Carroll from the Irish Blogger Agency. How are you? Hi, Melissa. Thank you for having me on your podcast. I'm great. Thanks so much. Oh, I'm so, so glad you're here. So as I said, and I know we've spoken about this before, I am asked all the time by retailers, by makers, should I get an influence? I like it so you can go and buy off a shelf. But so many people ask me the question, would it be useful for their business? And I'm constantly saying, I don't know. I don't know if that's the right route for market for you. So I'm really thrilled to have you on to have this conversation today, I suppose, to really explain what it is to talk about how best to use use it to understand I suppose the return on investment so I've loads of questions but before we kick off in I suppose all manner of things tea and tea break in the time that it takes to boil a kettle it's about mm-hmm. two minutes tell us a bit about yourself and your business okay so I am owner of two businesses um Irish blogger agency and mini media. So it probably all started when I was working in the bank. I was in the bank for 15 years and I was in probably we'll call it the bad bank. um, And I knew my redundancy package was coming and I decided to start blogging myself and retraining. So uh, I went from a, a banker to a blogger and then I seen a gap in the market for influencer marketing when I set up uh, into the West blogger network where influencers or bloggers at the time back in 2013 came together and um, we've seen the power of bloggers at events and sharing on social media and then I just set up Irish Blogger Agency um, to kind of fill that gap in the market in 2015. Um, It's kind of been a slow burn. Um, There's some interest in statistics around influencer marketing growth since probably 2015-16. It's gone from Uh, 1.7 billion in 2016 to 13.8 billion globally in 2021 so even them stats um I know I've I've made the right move here to get into this uh, influencer marketing space by the sound of that that's that's phenomenal by the sound of that and really the more I'm watching what you're doing and I'm watching the the great product shall we say that's coming out of you and your team and the influence you have this isn't a fad, is it, Sinead? This is a permanent part of the marketing movement. Absolutely, yeah. Influencer marketing is here to stay. Um, I suppose as Ireland's dedicated influencer marketing agency um, and home to more than 600 um, bloggers, YouTubers, social media influencers, we have a reach of 10 million. Um, and on a weekly basis, I connect with these influencers and I can see there's growth in even influencers signing up to my agency um, I'm lucky enough to have partnered up with uh, a Swedish based company, um, Mix Alliance, and I'm their only Irish member with access to this um, world's first exchange for influencer marketing. So through the platform that I have, I can search influencers, I can strategize, I can execute and I can manage marketing campaigns. And it makes it very easy for me as your agent to find um, suitable influencers um, that match your niche everything is fully transparent Um, all the statistics and reporting is is available through my platform Um, I help you negotiate the price with the influencer so I take away all the hard work and effort of searching for an influencer and um, you know make it easy for brands who have have never worked with influencers and make it affordable for for even smaller brands that may think it's out of their reach to work with them that that is amazing and it's like you're a one-stop shop but take me back to the beginning then so for for people like me who aren't weren't really very sure of what an influence does what they can do for you what they are I suppose what's your definition of being an influencer 
So I suppose first uh, to de define influencer marketing, um, it, it, it is a form of social media marketing. So it involves endorsements and product placements from influencers or people um, and organizations who have a sway over um, you know, a buyer um, because of their expertise. They might be popular on TikTok or Instagram or Snapchat, and they've built up a niche and a loyal following. They're producing authentic content. Um, predominantly, our uh, agency is made up of micro-influencers. Um, they range from between, let's we'll say, 5,000 followers on a given social media to 50,000. Um, so um, they really have their niche defined. They really have a loyal audience and their engagement rate is um, really good, um, maybe more so than the celebrity style influencers. Um, so, yeah, so with with influencers, they've already the audience built up so you can leverage their audience to drive traffic um, to your website and deliver um, a message as well for your brand. So. Yeah, I hope that all makes sense. Yeah, it, do you know what it does? And I think it just proves how much an influencer can do for you and your business. But listening to what you're saying there, as a business owner, as a retailer, as a product maker, you kind of need to know your niche in the first place, or you need to know who your customer is, I presume, in order then for an influencer to then tap in or further tap into that market. Yeah, um, you really do need, if you are considering using influence marketing, I suppose the best way of using it is to know um, what your strategy is and what you're trying to achieve from working with an influencer. Um, so the biggest thing I would find is people don't, don't know where to find them. So I have the solution for that. But you do need to set your budget and have a strategy around it. You need to decide on your goals and the message, whether you want to elevate your brand awareness or increase sales. Um, I always say you don't look at it as a one night stand working with influencers, you know, no more than Facebook advertising or any other form of advertising. You have to do it more than once and you have to test it all out. Um, so I would recommend that you build it into your, your digital marketing plan for the year. Um, and just another fact as well, I think about 79 percent of brands now are allocating a budget towards um, influencer marketing. So that's a massive shift as well in, in the wow. Irish market. Yeah. Um, and I've even noticed that since COVID um, and brands going online and um, building their e-commerce stores, you know, the cost of, face of uh, Facebook advertising can be quite expensive and it continues to rise. And influencer marketing is a really affordable um, uh, form of marketing if used correctly. And if you do the outreach correctly, define your strategy, and then obviously um, tracking your results of each campaign. So tracking the results then, and this is the one thing that fascinates me, and I suppose very much like traditional social media where you have the analytics there, how do retailers and product makers gauge the ROI or what, I suppose, what should they be looking for in return for this investment? Yeah, so first of all, once you do um, agree your strategy, whether it be, um, a giveaway you're asking somebody to review your products and maybe then afterwards guest testimonials you maybe want them to take over your account or you know help them with um get help from them with seo and backlinks so once you decide what you really want the influencer to do then it's easier to gauge the roi so i suppose Businesses of all sizes are getting positive results from influencer marketing um, and are benefiting from the bottom line that I've seen over the last um, 12 months, for example. Um, and there is no quick and simple way really to gauge the success of it. But what I just say to the brands that I'm working with, you know, determine your KPIs. So know what your KPIs are and then measure them. So it might be a matter of you want to get extra following on your Instagram so set yourself a goal there and figure out the best strategy to do that um, if you're a brand new um, brand um, obviously it's brand awareness so you're looking at reach you're looking at impressions you're looking at um, engagement rate then to to find out more about the volume um, and all of that so there's no de defined um, way of looking at ROI you have to take it as as you're looking at the campaign and work out what your goal is and what you're how you're measuring that goal so I suppose page views impressions 
um, and engagement are the main ones. But then obviously, if you're working um, long term with an influencer, revenue and conversions, that's where you want to be going and getting the sales. Um, so, yeah, that's a good way of looking at how to gauge ROI. There's loads of information there. Is this something then if if people come to you, if retailers, product makers come to you, is this something you can help them figure out as well? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm a fully serviced um, influencer marketing agency. Um, so I can help you with your strategy, um, can look at um, a, 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 your storyboard. If you have a product launch, we can look at wow. laying out your, your sequence of events, how many posts are going to be included in the campaign, what hashtags you want to do. Um, our platform can also tell, you may see an influencer with, we'll say, 10,000 followers. Um, you may not know who their own audience is made up of. So our platform can search that influencer and it will bring up all the data like their audience, whether they're 90% female and 10% male. It can tell you whether they're mainly based in Ireland, their audience or in the UK or America. It'll show you the age profile. So literally the data is at the tip of your fingers. So I can generate that information straight away. And then um, if you want to work with one or more influencers, I can compile them all on the platform. And with the click of a button, it will give me projections of what this campaign will look like before you even go all in on it. So you're totally aware of what you're investing your money on. And then it's up to you to put a value on, OK, if I spend X amount of money, does that mean I'm getting impressions and uh, new likes, traffic to my website? And then the most important thing that I'm seeing with working with uh, micro influencers is the user generated content. So if you're a small business and you don't have a marketing team and you're not the best content creator in the world, these influencers can create the content for you and you can batch it out for the month then and you don't have to worry about that either. So you can put a value on that work as well. Not only does this then sound like a great investment, but it also sounds like it's starting to save you time. Because as you say, if, if the influencer are there, are there for generating content, if they're leading you on a path that you've obviously helped them supported with because you understand their audience, this to me sounds win-win for the retailer, the product maker. They come to you, you have all this information at your fingertips, and obviously these are influencers that you know have the right audience for the retailer or the product maker. Absolutely. Um, and it, it's uh, sometimes I'm, I'm blown away myself, like I might think, oh, this is a perfect influencer for a campaign and then realize their audience mainly is in, we'll say, United Kingdom. Why would you work with that influencer if you're not shipping outside of Ireland? Then you can um, take them off the list. So it, it's, it's so good at, you know, generating all these reports um, helping you make the best decision. And then I can help you simplify your, you know, the amount of money you spend on it. Now, with that in mind, I always say to anybody who comes to me, keep an open mind about influencer marketing in terms of the spend. It's like any other form of advertising. Um, and I've been recommending clients to have a minimum of a thousand euro um, to start their, their influencer marketing journey with. Now, you don't have to spend it straight away, but we can put together a campaign for the year that will work out better than just paying 50 euro for an influencer for one off. That's like, um, you know, throwing money into the fire, really, to be honest. And I, I don't recommend that. I recommend having a strategy around it um, before you go spending any money on it. It sounds like what you're saying there is you need to build the engagement with the influencer, with yourself. It's not one of these just one-off hits. Here's 50 quid, go spend it. Like I've seen an awful lot of retailers and makers do that with random ad hoc Facebook campaigns that might be, let's boost a post and throw 50 quid at it. We know they don't work. No, uh, and and I've discovered that over the years, you know, um, and at the probably the start of it all, when brands were um, just getting their heads around influencer marketing, working with bloggers, um, and and working out the price point, um, I have discovered uh, fairly quickly that it is no point throwing your fifty or your hundred euro at one campaign and expecting it to work. You probably do need about a thousand euro of a budget and plan it over your your quarter or whatever 
that's that's great and I think as well especially with a lot of retailers and makers who would be planning ahead like that so Christmas for a lot of people starts way back in June or July or you're planning Mother's Day as you're coming into January I think it's a nice way again as your whole marketing strategy to then start linking this in having that thread throughout the year because it really sounds like something that can further engage new audience for you, new buyers for your products, for your services out there. But with that, and I suppose without knowing who your clients are or any of that, we would never disclose any of that. What sort of areas do you think lend really well then to using influencers? So predominantly in the Irish market, it's their female influencers. Um, uh, fashion, beauty, uh, lifestyle, mothers, parenting. Um, but there are um, thankfully males as well coming out of the woodwork. Um, and as I suppose my brand grows, um, that's when I'm going to see more coming through. Um, so yeah, predominantly females, um, lots of fashion, beauty, lifestyle, interiors, but they're really good content creators. So you might have a, a, um, a mom blogger who's really good at photography you can then hire that influencer to create fabulous branded photos um, and uh, reels through their other talent, do you know? Wow. So I have a resource there now where I can get you a content creator as well and you can get your bundle for the month. I, I love this because do you know what? And I know I said this to you before we started recording. I think there's a really bad misconception out there that influencers, and this is not me being disrespectful to any of them, but an awful lot of people just think, oh, they've been sent free products. You know, they've got their camera phone out, sat it on their kitchen table and are chatting away. This is not, this is so much more prepared and strategic. There's so much creative talent in what these influencers do. Massive. Um, I know myself from starting out in the early days, you know, if I was to create content, you'd have to hire your photographer, pay them their daily rate. You'd have to get your videographer. Um, but now these influencers are, are creating this really great content um, for TikTok stories. You know, this content can be used then for the clients, Facebook advertising or um, Instagram advertising, whatever platform. And um, yeah, so I'm, I'm uh, working with influencers on a weekly basis and um, teaching them, you know, how to become their best uh, self as a brand. So I'm investing a lot of time into getting them to a place, you know, where they deliver really high quality content and, you know, know how to, to engage with brands. And ultimately yeah. my goal is to see the influencer happy. Yeah. And the brand and also um, to build a relationship between them. And I think then that's when the customer or the consumer out there really sees it. I think when it's seamless, when it seems like the influencer truly cares about the brand or the product that they're working with, I think that's where, to be honest, for the retailer or maker, that's when the money starts pouring in. This is when you get the conversion to the sale. You then have a customer that becomes loyal to the brand. And as you say, this is when everyone starts to kind of do what they do best. The retailer or the product maker is selling their products. They're making their products. The influencer is really standing out for engagement, for content creation. It sounds like a no brainer. Why then? Why are people so scared of it? Why are there not more people using influencers? Because there's probably no blueprint for um for influence marketing in Ireland even when I was setting out my um, strategy like I had nowhere to go to figure all this out so I'm looking at the American market and the UK market and like there is massive um, billion dollar businesses in influencer marketing do you know so um, why can't Ireland do it um, I think at this point now there's enough talk about it there's enough people demystifying it you either embrace it now at this point or you don't. Um, it's one of those things. It's like we all had to embrace Zoom and here we are now and nobody's afraid of it. Um, like I'm very approachable. I'm one person here in, in my office uh, hoping to grow my team as, as this grows. Um, and I'm happy to talk to anybody um, for 15 minutes discovery calls, you know, um, that you can. Wow. Yeah, so... Uh, another thing I've started doing is brand spotlights. So if there's any brands out there 
who wants to come on. Um, I open up my um, Zoom to the influencers. It's normally about 20 influencers on it um, as I roll it out each week. And it's the genuine influencers who really want to use your brand. They're not just showing up and taking an hour out of their day if this brand means nothing to, nothing to them. So we've had really great results from that and really great partnerships. And sometimes it can start out, um, you know, that the, the um, influencer tries them out for free and then the brand sees, oh, great, we're getting a lot of traction out of this. Now let's engage them to be part of our strategy. So you're going into it with an, an open relationship and knowing, you know, all about it. So I'm hoping that as my brand grows and my name gets out there and people start ringing me and picking up the phone and not being afraid of me, that I can help, help them all get over this fear of influencer marketing. And I, and I think that's what it is. I suppose when we look back a few years ago, there was this big fear around Facebook advertising or yeah. gosh, we weren't using Instagram or TikTok. You really demystified what an influencer does, how best to use them. But you keep coming back to the fact they have to be part of the bigger strategy. This isn't just a one-off 50 quid, as you said. So I suppose, what would be your top tips for someone who's thinking about it, who's thought about it for a while, apart from literally after listening to this, picking up the phone to you, what would be your tips, we'd say, for them starting out or for them to really have thought about by the time they come to you? They really need to know what their um, goal is and they need to set their KPIs and their objectives. And once they're clear in their head what they're looking for, it's easy for me then to strategize with you and to find influencers to match what you're looking for. So if, for example, somebody wants to grow their Instagram following, um, sending out free products uh, or sending out products and getting them to review it may not be the way, but maybe a giveaway might be a way of doing it. So, and then you look at the results from that. So if it's a giveaway and you're looking for followers, don't expect conversions as well. Right. So be totally clear what you're doing and like at the end of the day it's like if you put an advertisement in the radio or the paper you don't know what's going to come out of it um even on, in in them instances um you can't really um track it but with our platform you can track it so we have um once the influencer creates the post or the story their url of that individual post is put onto the platform and it generates the return and investment through engagement through reach, through um, the media value of the content they've created. Um, and I can give you then projections before you start, but be so clear on what you want from it. Don't confuse brand awareness with conversions. Don't confuse, you know, set yourself one goal and then work through it. Fantastic. And I want to repeat something you said earlier, because this blew my mind when I was on the website, kind of researching and trying to understand influencer marketing more myself. Irish blogger agency has a global reach of over 10 million. And I know you said it earlier, but I just think that's mind blowing that your influencers who are obviously so well educated, so well taught by you, who obviously love what they do, that reach is phenomenal. So it really seems like a no brainer to come to you to try it out. Yes, put some money behind it as you would do with any of your other marketing strategies. But it really feels like if you're in any of those areas that you talked about, lifestyle, fashion, um, skincare, that this is a marketing strategy you have no choice right now but to try. So, Sinead, just before we finish up on the retail tea break, tell us what's coming up over the next few months for you and the Irish Blogger Agency. Yeah, so I suppose the things I'm working at right now is uh, relaunching my website, making it more user friendly. So hopefully uh, that will be done shortly. Um, also, I'm actually I was in the summer, I was uh, putting my uh, plan together for a podcast. So um, that's coming down the track. Watch this space. I Watch love this it. Space. Um, I'm really uh, going all out. There's no more sitting here uh, in my four walls. Um, you know, influencer marketing is is massive right now. We need, all need to embrace it. Got some amazing influencers on on our books um and uh hopefully we'll grow from strength to strength from here well i i really hope that there's any retailers or product makers out there listening give this a go like it seems like a no-brainer and i know i keep saying that but 
this whole area of marketing fascinates me. You've certainly demystified a lot of, I think, what we think we know about it, but you are definitely there to support, to hold hands, to explain and open up this area. So thank you so much for joining me today. This has been a fantastic conversation, and I think it's been a really good educational piece for so many businesses out there maybe give them the push to give you a ring because I'd highly, highly recommend it. So if you've enjoyed today's podcast with Sinead Carroll from the Irish Blogger Agency, please like and share and subscribe to the Retail Tea Break. Leave us a comment. Let us know if you've used an influencer recently or maybe if this is maybe your goal for 2022 that you're going to contact Sinead and get the ball rolling on having an influencer as part of your strategy So until next time, thanks very much.